A while ago, I released a video showing how to use an SD card with the ESP8266. In the comments for that video, someone asked if you could do the same thing on an ESP32. At first I assumed it'd be the exact same. You just have to change the pin definitions to match the SPI ports on the ESP32. It turns out the libraries are a little different, and the ESP32 actually has a much faster way to interface with SD cards. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the free micro SD card adapters that come with the cards. Instead of buying a module online, I'm going to show you how to interface with it from standard slow SPI, and then I'm going to show you how to interface with it using the SDMMC host drivers. So alright, let's get started. So the first thing you should know is that you don't have to buy those SD card modules online. If your microcontroller runs at 5 volts, it's not a bad idea. But if your microcontroller is running at 3.3 volts, then the micro SD card adapter that you get with a card is all you need. It's just important that you remember that SD cards operate at 3.3 volts. Anything above that will damage your card. There's no protection built in, so you have to be very careful you don't go over 3.3 volts. The ESP32 won't have that problem though, neither will the ESP8266. Make sure you know what your microcontroller operates at before you try this. So to actually make it, all you have to do is solder some male pin headers to it. They line up perfectly with the pads, and solder sticks to the pads just fine. Once that's done, you can interface with the SD card directly. You don't need any other hardware. The SD card itself has its own controller built in that can operate over SPI and MMC among other things. So this is a great way to save money, and it's a nice compact card module. Okay, so let's hook this up in basic SPI mode. First make sure you take your SD card out of the adapter. Then let's look at the card from behind, reading the pins from left to right. We'll skip the first pin. Connect the second pin to 19, which is the master in slave out. Third pin goes to ground. Fourth pin goes to 18, which is the clock. 5th is 3.3 volts, 6th grows the ground again, 7th is 23, master out, slave in, 8th is 5, which is the chip select, and 9th we skip. Now that we have this connected with basic SPI, let's move over to the Arduino IDE. The first thing we have to do is make sure the ESP32 boards are installed. We'll do that by copying a URL into the board manager configuration. Once that's done, we can go into the actual board manager, search for ESP32, and install the boards. When that's done, we can browse through the examples and find the ESP32 SD card examples that were just added. With basic SBI, the SD test example just works right out of the box. The only thing you'll have to do is make sure you select your own ESP32 board before you upload to it. It's also worth noting that you should keep your SD cards out of the SD card reader when you program this. It might work fine for the basic SPI, but for the MMC examples, you won't be able to program the ESP32 while it's in there. Once programmed, put your SD card in the adapter, open the serial monitor, and reset your ESP32. If everything worked correctly, you should see a lot of output from the test. The key things to note here are the read and write speeds at the very bottom. If you're keeping track of what's faster, now's a good time to write down those times. Alright, so the basic SPI example was pretty easy. This is fine if you're occasionally logging small amounts of data. For most people, that's probably enough. But if for some reason you want more speed, let's move on to the MMC examples. The wiring for the MMC example is different, but it's not any more complicated. In this case, I'm going to hook up all the wires for 1-bit and 4-bit mode, but if you're only going to try 1-bit, you can omit the last two wires, which is data 3 and data 2. So again, looking at the adapter from behind, with the pins facing down, starting from the leftmost pin, number 1 goes to 4, 2 goes to pin 2 on the ESP32, 3 goes to ground, 4 goes to 14, 5 goes to 3.3 volt, 6 also goes to ground, 7 goes to 15, 8 goes to 13, which is D3, and 9 goes to 12, which is D2. Again, those last two pins you only need for 4-bit mode. Alright, 
So make sure your SD card isn't in the adapter and let's go back to the IDE. If you go back to the same directory we got our first example from, you'll see another one called SDMMC test. Open that. Unfortunately, the first time I tried this, it didn't work. But while browsing around the internet looking for solutions, I found a thread on Reddit where someone suggested a different way to hook this up, which didn't use any additional components like resistors and worked in 1-bit and 4-bit mode. So we're going to be modifying this example using the tips I found there. The first thing I did is add a define for 1-bit mode. That way I can just switch it on and off easily. The next thing I did is modify the setup function. I enabled a series of internal pull-up resistors. And finally, in the sdmmc begin command, I added the 1-bit mode variable that I defined earlier. This boolean parameter here is how you switch between 1-bit and 4-bit mode. So with those modifications added, let's upload this code and test it. Remember, it won't program with the SD card in the adapter. Once it's done uploading, pop your SD card back in, bring up the serial monitor, and reset the ESP32. If everything worked correctly, you should see the same output as last time, except everything will be a lot faster. It's kind of amazing how much faster 1-bit mode is, but we could still do better. This last part will be quick. Pull your SD card out, go back to the IDE, Change the 1-bit mode flag to false. Reprogram and test again. This time you'll notice that the speeds are just a little bit faster than last time. Is it worth the extra pins? Probably not, but if you do need more speed, it's an option. So that's the video. Hopefully now you're ready to take all those adapters you have laying around and turn them into reader modules for your ESP32 and 8266 projects. Thanks for watching.